What's up guys, JB2017 here, and I am bringing you a new Fallout 4 tips and tricks video. This time we're looking at another super powerful and unique hidden weapon in the Commonwealth. Just a quick reminder guys, this is your number one hub for Fallout 4 content here on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned on my channel for daily Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. Today I'm going to show you how to get the Ashmaker minigun which is one of those unique weapons with a special modifier that just makes it that much better. And this unique weapon also happens to be tied to a side quest called the Big Dig. So if you do this side quest, you will get this gun no matter what. But as we usually do in my guides, we'll do a quick rundown of the mission, which will take around 45 minutes to an hour of real time. So the way that you initiate the Big Dig is by talking to Bobby. And Bobby is a ghoul woman, and she's located in Good Neighbor, which is a very, you know, um, common place. You'll go to it in the main quest, so you'll know where this is if you've played, you know, maybe 5-10 hours of Fallout and done the main quest. And from the entrance of Good Neighbor, you're going to go straight and then take a right into this alleyway, and here's Bobby behind this door. She's uh, really shady. She wants you to do a job for her, so you're going to basically accept her job and that requires going down and digging a tunnel, essentially. It gets a lot more exciting than that, I promise. But essentially what you're going to do is go down there and kill some Mire Lurks. It's very simple, very straightforward. And then Bobby's going to run back down and say, Okay, you killed the Mire Lurks. You're good enough. Now I need to meet you in Diamond City. So that's kind of phase two of this quest. You're going to go and meet Bobby in Diamond City. She'll be hanging out at the noodle kind of bar stand area in the middle of Diamond City Market. And then she'll tell you that you need to break a guy out of jail to help you with this job. And that guy's name is Mel. So he's hanging out in Diamond City Security, which I guess is the jail area for, you know, the whole of Diamond City. So Mel is in jail. You have to go there. There are several ways to break him out, but I have high charisma, so it was very easy. I literally just said, let him out and pass that speech check. And it was that simple. But you can also go to the back and hack a Protectron. And that Protectron will actually attack the guards for you. And then you'll be able to lockpick Mel out of there. Or you could just lockpick, you know, his cell door. But if you're seen by anyone, then people will become hostile. And of course, that's a whole thing. So the way you approach this is really up to you and kind of your skills and what you have available. But it's very, very easy to just have a certain amount of charisma and, you know, get Mel out of there that way. So once you break Mel out, you'll talk to him for a minute and then you'll need to head back to Good Neighbor to the dig site. Now your objective is to dig to the strong room under Diamond City and kind of, you know, steal from there, make a lot of caps. Basically, that's the whole objective for Bobby. And so Mel comes and he brings an iBot that actually is using some fancy wasteland technology to uh, kind of emit a pulse and break through some loose earth and dig a lot faster than you would, you know, otherwise. So you're going to use this iBot and click on certain parts of the wall that look similar, that are kind of loose, and then the robot's going to basically, you know, emit this wave of energy and boom, it just, you know, the walls come down. So it's a lot, you know, simpler in action than how I'm explaining it, to be honest. But just keep pushing on. This takes a little while, especially if you're lost. There will be some hidden walls that don't actually bring you towards the objective. So make sure you're always moving towards that objective marker on your compass. And also, sometimes Sonia the iBot can get stuck. And sometimes it'll disappear and go underground. It'll do weird, crazy things, and you'll be like, come on, hurry up. Sometimes you'll click on a part of the wall that you want her to get rid of, and she doesn't do it. So usually going and talking to Mel helps. Mel will say something like, Sonia, get ready, and then you know the robot appears and does what you want it to do. So try to do that. Don't get too frustrated. I got stuck in a few points, but I didn't have to like reload a save or anything. So don't worry about that. Um, just, you know, if this happens to you, be patient and Eventually, you will make it to the strong room area. And once you're there, you discover that this is not the Diamond City strong room. This is Hancock's storage room, or maybe it's his strong room too. I don't really know. And so once you're there, you're confronted with these guards. And, you know, it's a big spin. Ooh, nobody saw that coming, essentially. And at this point, you have to side with Bobby, who you've been with the whole time, and you're trying to steal things, or you side with this chick called Fahrenheit. And she represents Hancock, which is the mayor of Good Neighbor. And she's like, Hancock wouldn't like this. You know, Hancock's, you know, got a lot of influence, all this stuff. 
So you can side with either person and that won't affect you getting the ash maker. So keep that in mind. You can side with either person. There's no consequences for getting the weapon. For example, I used my charisma to convince Bobby to leave. And then Fahrenheit came up to me and said, hey, that was a cool move. Here's a weapon and gave me the ash breaker. Um, if you want to go the other route, you can kill Fahrenheit and loot her body and there will be the ash maker. So that has no bearing on whether you get the gun, you'll get it no matter what. So don't worry about it. And also after this quest, make sure you go and talk to Hancock, who's the mayor of Good Neighbor. He's an available companion. I'm not sure if you have to complete this quest to have him as a companion or not. It kind of sounds like you do, but I can't confirm that. So I'm not going to say that. And so here is the Ash Maker. This weapon sets targets on fire for 15 points of damage with the Incendiary Modifier. That's the name of the modifier. And the good thing about this weapon is it automatically comes with this modifier. So you may be able to find a minigun out in the world that drops off of a legendary enemy that has Incendiary or Bleed, which is a similar kind of modifier, but this has it automatically. So that's why this is a good unique weapon. It has this built-in modifier, which is quite strong. And I haven't been able to figure it out. I've read some things that say that Incendiary actually adds 15 points of damage per bullet, but if that were true, this is an incredibly overpowered weapon. I'm not exactly sure that it does that. It might have some kind of reset timer on when the fire can affect the enemy or a certain amount of bullets before it can affect the enemy again, but it is still a very powerful modifier. Do not doubt that. In terms of modding, there's not a lot of special things you can do with this weapon. You can do basically the same thing you can do with any minigun. And so I you know, recommend you look at the barrel options. There's some barrels that will improve damage. Uh, you know at the cost of range or you know do some other things increase you know accuracy i think it's more of a player feel thing with the modding but there's you know you can put the shredder mod on there if you just want to make your minigun look cool or if you genuinely bash a lot of enemies with your gun i don't really do it but if you do that you know you can also mod your um you know ash maker to have shredder on it too and that will probably look really cool with the fire effect that's on this weapon I went out to the glowing sea to try out this weapon for myself on some, you know, pretty tough enemies. And I would say I'm not super impressed with the damage, but then I thought I'm not using a combat focused character. My character is all about intelligence and charisma. So it's probably not a very good barometer for actually how good this weapon is. But keep in mind, I don't have heavy gunner on that just doubles the damage for heavy weapons. So if you have heavy gunner, the ash maker is probably a formidable weapon, maybe one of the most powerful in the game, of course, outside of all of the fat men available, um, you know, in the game as well. But what I want to know is, are you going to go out and get the ash maker after watching this video? I think it's kind of a cool collector's item. Of course, getting, you know, unique mini guns is just a cool thing in Fallout games. Uh, how would you rate this weapon as well on a scale? If you've gotten it already, maybe you have some kind of idea how it would rate on a scale. Let me know about that and also suggest a new weapon for me to go out and find and make a new weapon guide for you guys very soon. Share all of that stuff below. All right, guys, today I showed you how to get the Ash Maker unique weapon in Fallout 4. And next time we will cover more Fallout on my channel. So stay tuned for daily Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. And remember that this is your number one hub for all Fallout 4 content on YouTube. If you learned something new, remember to hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe for continued weapon guides. I'm working on a character build guide for you guys as we speak and more videos coming very soon. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.